Oh my uh, God, I look so yellow. <laughs> I'm surprised with that surprising. Mashia uh, ni politically correct. Messi sudu lekai. Kete lekai. Straight ahead. The GNU. How does it make you feel? What is that got to do with Gondo? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if if they gave you a wrong brief. Uh, I could okay. not brief. Okay. All right. No, they didn't give me a wrong brief. But they, I thought you would start with. Uh, with the present and then move on to the outer perimeters. Apologies, I've already covered your, your speech in full. Okay, okay. What do I think of the GNU? Yes. Um, you know, there are certain things that come, not because we had planned them, not because we had thought they are the most, uh, uh, they're the best way out. And I think that we latched on to the GNU almost like clutching on straws. There's very little in the GNU, in my view, that would keep us together. And um, I was very vocal about this idea because right from the beginning I felt that, you know, when you take a stand, a political stand, you need to live by it. And we've gone through a GNU in our history because the time was, um, the t the time, the time was right. But to go through it again, I did feel that it was stretching it a bit because by now there are certain promises we have made to our people there are certain expectations that are there and having to compromise because of a position that you're in is not quite what i would have opted for at this time in our struggle we've taken a long time to deliver to our people and we need to take steps forward and up our game so right from the beginning i made my views clear that i don't think that this is the best way to get to where we want to get to and I think that if we go alone, whichever way we go alone, we will get there faster. Uh, dragging other people along who don't have the same ideological perspective as ourselves, I thought would, would delay our delivery of what we promised our people. But that was then. And right now, I'm just looking around and seeing how it plays itself out. Uh, because any, any merger such as is ex expected of the GNU, uh, calls for a compromise of your own position and I don't think that I would have agreed to a compromise right now. Right now is a testing time for our people to test our strength, to test our ability to deliver our, our, our commitment to what we promise but all along we've got to make sure that the person who's next to us travels the same route with us. But if it gets, uh, if it gets to uh, creating a kind of uh, stable environment, well, there's very little I can say. But from my perspective, I would have wanted the ANC to use this last 10 years to deliver to our people. Our people have been waiting a very long time, and I would not want to find that at the end of this, they are not satisfied with what we are providing them. So I would have wanted a, a what do our people want, and how do we get it to our people. But then, we had a meeting with the N at the NEC and we all agreed to compromise and this is the compromise that we've agreed to. Thank you very much. You have in the past stood firm and believed South Africa can be led by a female, something that we have all wanted. How, how ready do you think South Africa, through the ANC or, or in any other political party, how do, are you going to achieve this dream of yours of seeing a female leading South Africa, not as acting president, in your lifetime? Well, if we don't, we will have failed in our responsibility to our people. When we took the root of the struggle, we didn't differentiate between men and women. We were all equal. When we got to the, to the field, the, the killing fields, we were all equal. We carried the same bags and knapsack that the, the, the males do. And there was no difference between us and them. And I would have thought that now would be a time that we raise a woman to, uh, to the level of a president because that is what we promised our people by, by being there to fight for the struggle. We didn't fight for a struggle for a man to, to take the uppermost place. We fought for equality. And I think that at some point we would need to work out what's in the best interest of creating the kind of society where we have equality between men and women and this is reflected in what we do and in how we govern. 
So I'm hoping at some point that uh, the men will sit back and say, let the best woman go forward and see how we deliver differently. Because women have a sensitivity that men lack, especially when it comes to how they look after a society, how they look after their children. And perhaps uh, so, um, we are ready for that. We are ready for a woman president any minute now. Are you disappointed that the Women's League, all females in the ANC could not support your, your various attempts at leadership? Yes, I was disappointed. I was disappointed because I grew up understanding that we were equal. I left at a very early age to go to the camps and train, trained in the same way that the men trained. There was no difference. But I come home to find that we still have a long way to go to, to create the environment where people will understand that women are just as good, if not better, uh, at running a country. And we've seen female presidents all over the world and they certainly have drawn a great deal of admiration around the world. And I'm certain South Africa would have been long uh, ahead of itself if they had tried a female leader. But that is for the electorate to decide. And um, I hope that there will be a time where there will be an even ground, where money is not the issue, where any kind of pressure is not the issue. And women should stand up to that and, and take the lead. We will be much better when they are there. Thank you very much. In closing, uh, there's a big split in the EFF yes. and a possible death of the EFF. How does it concern you as someone who wants Africans to unite? Well, I have watched the developments and I did think that when Zuma left the ANC to create a new party, that he would attract uh, people who have the same vision as he has. And he certainly has attracted that in the, in the EFF. I think it's a pity that we're losing out on the EFF as it was, because it was a very vibrant youth organization, which brought a lot of, um, you know, vibrancy. yes, vibrancy. vibrancy and all of that. But I think that they can inject the same vibrancy in the, in the MK. And I wish President Zuma well, and I hope that he'll be able to attract them to him. Uh, because we cannot afford too many splinters within the, the level of political parties. I think what we have now is enough. We don't want to have a, a ballot paper that is similar to the DRC with 40 candidates sitting there. Uh, we have a long way to go. We've suffered enough in our country and we need to make sure that we can deliver to the people what we promise them. And the sooner that we get our act together beyond this fractional uh, fractionalization, the better it will be for everybody. In one paragraph, if you were to teach a young girl for who's going to grow up in South Africa to learn from uh, Professor Mushen Kondo, what is it that you do if you were to sum up one, one paragraph? Dedication, commitment. He is a fervent um, member of the ANC. You can, his heart is there. Um, and in everything that he did, he put the ANC first. And I admired him for that. When I came from exile, and he was busy with my mother because he provided su support for my mother, I could only admire him for his dedication uh, to ensuring that the ANC does triumph. Uh, and we owe what we have to him and people like him. And I would have hoped that we would have had a state funeral for him he is the kind of man that walked tall and we appreciate everything he stood for. But as it is now, I hope that the family uh, heals from um, what, what we're going through because they would know by now just how much we cared for him. They would know by, much, by now how much he meant to us. And I hope them, I hoped they, I hope them the best between now and a um, few days to come. It's a difficult time for them and uh, we will keep close to them to make sure that they are able to take this last journey.
Peter Tukuna, a good friend of mine, an advisor to me when I was a minister, a man who helped me guide my way through when I returned from exile, program director, Professor Sinokwane, acting executive director of the Department of Institutional Advancement of UNISA, Professor Olga Gondo, and all members of the late Professor Bushe Gondo in attendance here today. <coughs> Mr. Charlotte Mampane and other members of the University Council present here. Professor Uleng Lenkabula, uh, Principal and Vice Chancellor of the University of South Africa. I acknowledge also Minister uh, Chaveni, seems to be the sole representative of government with us today. We acknowledge you. Um, Oh, and I acknowledge myself, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a misprint there somewhere. <laughs> Members of the Diplomatic Corps, representing various countries here in South Africa. Um, Members of the uh, Institute of uh, Higher Learning here in UNISA. Professor Olga Mkondo and family members of the late Moshe Gondo in attendance today. Mrs. Charlotte Mampane and other members of the University Council present here today. Members of Parliament that we still have here. Uh, Minister Chaveni, welcome to you. <coughs> Minister Sibelani, I believe he's here. And uh, former Minister um, Susan Shabamu. Members of the Diplomatic Corps representing various uh, countries in South Africa, our esteemed invited guests and all distinguished members of the audience. Reverend Chawane and all other members of the clinical community present and representatives of various media houses today, I hope you can the story well. So an outstanding member of our fight against oppression this time. All friends, from our colleagues and relatives of the Gondo family, watching these proceedings remotely from various places in the continent and globally. Fellow participants, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you. Please accept my acknowledgement of the line with the necessary protocols. If I've missed anything, uh, please forgive me for now. The Gondo family in particular, that come to mourn with us, a very dear friend of the struggle, a shredded son of the revolution, an outstanding academic and profound thinker. Professor Kondo was, renowned, was a renowned intellectual who contributed immensely to the understanding of our world and the world that we live in, not only South Africa, but the world we live in. Effortlessly providing insights into a wide range of subjects, a scholar who provided much needed analysis of our place in the world and the broader world we occupied. He had a gift for words, a wordsmith, I would say, in common, in common language, with a rare gift to capture every aspect of our lives and struggles with the easiest phrase that he could throw around. He was able to capture every aspect of our struggles and our lives with a few words that would resonate with us for days, a very rare gift he had with the sharp care. I got to know the Gondo family from a friendship I developed in my year-long stint in detention in May 1976, with the younger brother of the illustrious Gondo family by the name of Zinji Van Gondo. From a psychological perspective, his friendship carried me through my ordeal, my year-old ordeal in prison. But I only met him for the first time outside of prison. A year later, I soon got to know his family, and I owe him a great deal for the courage he instilled in me to face the refugees of prison. I have therefore embraced the family of the Godos because I felt I was carrying through the most severe ordeal of my life. I got to know the family of this friendship, and I got to know also the younger members of the family. 
I owe them all a great deal for the courage that they instilled in me to face the, the ravages of prison, an illustrious family that played a pivotal role in our understanding of the salient forces in the struggle and our role in harnessing these forces to achieve a revolutionary end. This is how I met this profound intellectual Professor Bono. I soon left the country after being released from prison together with uh, the young Bono Sinjiva for some unknown destination in exile. And in Gesta's work, it became a must read for us in exile. We all read his work and could identify with it. And I, in particular, had become an extended family member. And on return to our country, I found that the Gondos had become an extended arm of my family, working closely with my mother, who then was the leader of the UTF, was at that time uh, the third president of the UTF, and they were the intellectual engine that kept her going and kept the organization ideologically ahead of the forces of apartheid. This is the environment we returned to in 1991. Very humble and unobtrusive, the, Bondo, the Bondos were a backroom engine that kept chugging for the organization, the ANC and the UGF. My mother, who was then one of the three presidents of the UGF, had surrounded herself with a solid infrastructure that consisted of the best brains in the Bondos. And an ardent young revolutionaries that came from that particular family. She surrounded herself with many other ardent uh, revolutionaries, and I dread probably Susan Moore as a representative of those young ardent revolutionaries. Thank you for coming, Professor Susan. Recently, at the funeral of the Bondo family, Professor poignantly gave a moving vote of thanks to all that had gathered there and thanked our family for having looked after his family on return in the same way that they had looked after our mother, summing up a relationship that had carried us through decades of struggle. I don't know what my mother would have done without the goddess next to her. I returned home where I had to maneuver my rights to my place. My mother had an extended family with a hierarchy, with a hierarchy to it, and the goddess were pretty much at the very top of it and we were somewhere down there. <laughs> so if you came home late and your plate was gone, that was it. Here she had an extended family, and the Gondos, as I say, were the apex. Understanding my place in this hierarchy of things, very low, I decided that I would fall in, even though it was against my wishes and a great deal of anguish. In the early years of our return to the country, the Gondo family held intellectual commanding heights of our discourse with amazing simplicity. My father was soon requested to take up the vice chancellorship of the University of Venda. I was aghast. Dada, do you know how far the University of Venda is? And he looked at me and said, that's not material. I've been given an honor and I'm going to live up to that honor. And if you know how far Venda is for an old man like my dad, you would know what it meant. It doesn't matter, he would say, he would say, these Congo boys are very good and very sharp, you know, he would respond. He indeed drove to Venda very many times thereafter. And he would steal a satisfied appearance in my direction, as much as to say, I got you. And so we all adjusted to the new situation. My mom, on the other hand, had long accepted the Congo's head with their gentle support throughout her tenure in the UTF. And between them and Sister Bernard and Susan here, there was very little need for any of us in the family. So whether we were there or not, she felt very really complete with those people around her. When I became minister, there was an automatic <coughs> arsenal to help analyze and provide solutions for government. I gathered around me a kind of people that could help me navigate the statecraft. With Professor Mbondo as my advisor, we took on the treacherous task of governance and the need to create <coughs> a strong public service. The wisdom and guidance that I received from Professor Mugondo made my job so much more manageable and gratifying. Together with other advisors like Professor Siepa today, we were certain that we had all the solutions to our problems. Nothing was beyond our reach. Between him, Professor Siepa, I had an in-house capacity that was unmatched in the country. And together we worked our way 
with zest because I had the capacity to do so. Most of my achievements <coughs> in government at that stage would not have been possible without them. And so when I took back, when I look back at the ground we have traversed with Professor Bondo, I'm filled with gratitude and pride for the sterling work we had. And sterling work that they put up to make sure that I was successful. We took on a jaded public service and sought to breathe new life into it. Professor Bondo was at his best when he had a solution to sell. And he had a keen sense of putting his, his eye to it. And he had a way of contorting his face so that he actually understood what he was saying. Even if you didn't understand it, you had to look like you understood it. <laughs> Some of the time, his intellectual level flew above most of us. Yeah. But if you fixed your eye on him, he felt, yeah, he's just this. <laughs> we took on the, the jaded public service and sought to breathe new life in it. And the professor was at his best. He had a solution to sell. And we tackled the problem with a great deal of zest. With the professor leading the pack, always at his best when he thought he had an answer. Whether you accepted his answer or not, that was your problem. He had an answer, he put it on the table, and your job was to follow that. We restructured the public service with amazing enthusiasm and dexterity. We were certain that we, had, we would change the world. We structured the public service, and that became one regular item of our discussion. And Professor Gondo was in his element always when he talked about the public service. We sallied forth as troops with an evangelical mission to restructure the public service. We created a university to professionalize the services. And we had hoped that we would outdo UNISA. With all the trappings to incentives, the service here, Professor lived his passion. He had a passion for the public service. He had a passion for people who were responsible for giving services to the people. And when he was in this space, he felt at his best. With all the trappings to incentives and the service, Professor lived out his passion. And I'm glad to say he lived out his passion in my hands. Here, Professor lived out his passion, and I am certain he dreamt of efficiency in the sector. I leave it to you to gauge whether we succeeded or not. We thank the university for their role in hosting the ceremony. There's very little that can be said about Professor Mbondo in the time that we have, but I believe all of you know him. Mm -hmm. I loved him very much as an older brother, and he taught me a lot. I'm greatly indebted to him, and I'm very grateful for the Mbondo's inviting us here. Thank you so much on behalf of my family, on behalf of my mother, and on behalf of myself for the road that we have trod with Professor to be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you.